It's good to be back. Though five weeks is a strikingly long time in college, it's not enough to make it feel like home. So I'd like to thank Lon and the committee for inviting me here to speak and giving me a chance to come home for the weekend and miss my Thursday classes. I spent a significant portion of my life at Grand Rapids Christian High, and actually so has my family. My mom is in one of these orchestra, no, they're not up there, that's me. Um, my mom is in one of those orchestra pictures with her 80s hair. <laughs> anyway, I was so excited to be able to come back to a familiar place. And then you went and changed it on me. I got lost like 10 times today, and the only reason I found my way back is because there are like three stairways that are the same. But there are TVs and whiteboards and glass everywhere. The science wing looks like it should be in a movie. There's a coffee shop and a cafeteria and a greenhouse and a writing center and like a giant indoor courtyard. I am just in awe and incredibly jealous of my little brother. Now, I'm not bitter. I didn't have these things in high school, like wheels and everything, but I'm not bitter because I got so many other things from Christian High, not the least of which was the opportunity to attend a college like Harvard. And that's what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to report from the field, to be a voice of recent experience in the ongoing conversation the Christian schools are facilitating about how best to create environments for students to excel. After only five weeks at Harvard, I can't honestly say whether I'm ready for everything that will come at me. But I can say how grateful I am for what Christian High has done for me and will continue to do for future generations. So, college. College is, college, college is terrifying. I mean, the buildings are, are just really big, and you have to walk places, and you, you have to control your time and commit large chunks of it to just sitting down and studying. You don't have food always at your disposal. You have no idea what to expect from classes, which apparently aren't classes anymore. They're lecture or section or lab. Grades are completely different. Should you go to office hours? What are those? Are there famous people there? Because sometimes there just seem to be famous people on campus, and no one tells you because I guess you're just supposed to know these things. Like, there's this amazing forum I'm going on tonight with the president of Columbia, but you have so much work to do, you probably won't go, and oh my goodness, have you become that guy who just studies all the time? I mean, it's 2 a.m., but that's normal here. I'm so hungry. Why is everyone around me amazing and talented? This homework is absurd. If I'm spending this much time on it, maybe I shouldn't take the class, but I think I want to major in this, but maybe I don't. It's really hard, and I'm not enjoying it. No, no, I haven't made an enormous mistake. I should have taken that class that all my friends are taking. They love it, and... I just, I don't think I'll get a job with this degree. Oh, that's right, I don't have a job yet. But I did see a flyer for someone hiring. Why are there so many flyers? I'm already drowning in emails. I literally cannot go to the bathroom without 20 emails showing up in my inbox. And sometimes I just want to go and curl up in the building, but they're all so big. <sighs> Tuesday. That is the actual approximate thought process going on in the heads of most college freshmen. We have been displaced, taken out of context. Most of us have never had a change in our lives this drastic ever. And it's frightening and disconcerting for anyone. There are, however, shining moments of comfort when I can look back in gratitude at the ways Christian High has prepared me for this. The most obvious of these is the academic, academics that have prepared me for college work. College classes feel nothing like high school classes. It requires an enormous amount of concentration to sit through two hours of a professor talking about the same topic, especially when he, they are moving at twice the speed of your ability to comprehend and your pencil keeps breaking and word is not indenting your Roman numerals correctly. You're all laughing at me, but this is a new thing and it takes some getting used to. So those moments when I recognize familiar material, when I can look back at a high school class or activity and say, ah, I can do that. Those moments are really nice. Vectors, oh, I know those. Oh, rhetorical analysis, heck yeah. Oh, I'm all over those French religious wars. A stage, I can say things on that. Limits, oh, the limit does not exist. If anyone got that reference, I'm really sorry. 
these are grounding points in a world that seems very ungrounded. The second form of preparation is opportunities. Many of my peers are ecstatic to finally be in college because high school was so boring and everyone was such a square. But I really liked high school, darn it. I found plenty of challenges and ways to explore. Christian High is that perfect size where we're big enough to have a club or team for most everything, but small enough that each of those clubs doesn't have their own treasurer. <laughs> it was safe to sail, to explore new waters without being lost in the vast ocean of possibilities and people. I could go rock climbing with Adventure Club when I felt like it, or write for Eagle Eye without having to be a climber or a journalist that goes to Washington, D.C. for international conferences every summer. But I could also commit serious time to participate in and lead activities that I did know I loved, like improv, theater, forensics, orchestra. In many ways, the latitude and variety college gives you is overwhelming. And having a high school that balances breadth and depth of opportunity has been an enormous blessing. And even if I didn't have enough to explore or I felt bored, the people around me were enough to make high school extraordinary. For four years, I was surrounded by smart, driven, creative, funny, exceptional peers who have become my closest friends and from whom I have learned just as much, if not more, than from any teacher. Nevertheless, I've also had skilled and committed teachers who genuinely care about me as a person and as a student, who check up on me, who I can come back to and talk about anything. I never felt like I could not come to a teacher for help if I was struggling, could not be honest with them about why I didn't get my homework done. And let me tell you, it made learning a whole lot more exciting. And finally, Christian High has been a school that is unified in a faith community and a mission to prepare its students to be servants of Christ in the world. I, what a blessing it is to have a gorgeous wooden prayer wall right in the middle of one of our hallways. That's, that's just amazing. There are certainly groups that I can and have sought out like this at Harvard, but it is not universal and integrated into all we do like it is at Christian High. My faith and my growth and my action, I must now take into my own hands. Christian High has given me the tools to do that, but I miss being in the blacksmith's shop. Grand Rapids Christian High was an extraordinary place while I was here to learn, to perform, to compete, to grow. It is doing so many things well to prepare its graduates for the future, particularly college. And now it is becoming even more extraordinary by looking to top colleges and high schools for cues as to how to prepare students even better. It's really quite stunning as a current college student to consider how beneficial these changes and renovations will be. One of the first things that's first things that strikes you about college is the level of independence you're expected to have. And I'm not just talking about having to do your laundry, though that is a thing you have to devote a significant chunk of your Sunday to every week. Every other week. Every couple of weeks. The point is, you have much more responsibility for and independence in what you do. This is especially true at a place like Harvard, where freshmen can TA classes, where almost every theater production is entirely student-run, where you can apply for grants to throw parties or start a global nonprofit. The idea is that if you give students the ability and latitude to do amazing things, they will. To explore and to create, they will. Harvard has a J-term, as in a five-week break in January. Students are able to take internships, travel the world. Many groups take tours around the country. Sometimes these are created through Harvard, but just as often, they're students' initiative using Harvard's money. It's a break in the normal school year that gives students the chance to go out and do something. This is exactly what Christian High is doing with Winterham, allowing students to take initiative and find an internship that interests them, or go on trips around the world and learn and explore and experience the world in a way impossible to replicate in the classroom. One thing that is also continually emphasized at Harvard, and I think at college in general, is to explore. If you've planned out your courses, your career, your house and your spouse and the color of the azaleas in your front yard, great. 
But don't close off other avenues. Seek out interests you've never looked at before because you never know when you'll find something you'll really love. Many professors at Harvard offer freshman seminars where they get to teach something they are personally interested in and students get to explore something new in a close-knit and low-pressure setting. Exactly what the winter room classes at Christian High allow. Teachers and students exploring new and unusual topics together. Speaking of together, college work, especially P sets, look at me, I'm using college lingo, that means problem sets, uh, demand a lot of collaborative learning. I have stayed up almost every Monday night in the basement of misery uh, working through math with friends. I guarantee you when I start my homework this weekend, I will be Skyping my classmates. But because, because you just cannot do it on your own, Homework in college is no longer just practice. It is a whole new medium for learning the material in new ways. And what ends up happening is that students will teach each other, will figure it out, and different people will explain different parts of the problem. It's so cool to see these department common rooms, common areas set up here, and time for learning together like this set aside in the schedule. Because I can just imagine myself sitting around those tables with my classmates working through problems and discussions. And even if we're not working on the same thing, we'll still do homework together, you know, for moral support. Another thing about college that no one told me is how long class is. It's a, also a different type of learning. In lecture, information is dumped on you like a truckload of oranges. And in section, you actually have to learn how to understand the information. And then you have to sit down and learn it yourself as homework. You just have to be OK with committing a perfectly free day to sitting down for three hours and writing or reading or memorizing. But more in-depth learning can get done in that amount of time. And having a blocked schedule that, like Christian High is implementing, prepares students for that kind of a sustained attention in class and out. Christian High's improvements will prepare students for the roads ahead in many ways. But there are some things it's very hard to prepare anyone for. Many college students will tell you that college brings with it an enormous identity crisis. You've identified yourself with what you're good at, who you associate with, what you like. And most of that will change and be changeling continue be changing continuously for four years. Thrown into a new context, you don't know what you're good at. The higher levels of subjects you thought you liked might just not be your thing. You'll probably find something you love and have never done before. You won't know who you are. And especially at a place like Harvard, it's easy to feel insignificant. Everyone is so incredible and talented and motivated. How can you measure up? Who are you anyways? How can you handle this? One of my favorite moments at Harvard so far was when waiting to audition for a Christian singing group, I started humming, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. I'm, a, I'm really glad Chamber sang that today. The girl sitting next to me started singing along in simple harmony, and we sang through all three verses. I may not know all of who I am. I may never know, but I know where I come from, and I know to whom I belong. I come from a community built upon generations of faith and dedicated to continuing that faith. I come from a community whose generosity and sacrifice has given me and thousands like me a school, a church, a home that have rooted me in my faith and allowed me to go somewhere I never dreamed was possible. I come from a community I will never leave. And I belong to God. College is hard. College is new. And yes, college is terrifying. But I'm not afraid. And all I can say is thank you.
Jacob, thank you. I don't know where you went into the crowd. I'm not sure where you're sitting, but it's wonderful to have you back home. And we're glad that you think of this as your home. It is, and it always will be. You know that. You know, these, uh, these kind of events are very special events for us at Growing Up as Christian. They're fun to plan. They're a lot of work. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears that many people put into a planning for an event such as this. Jacob, your being here means a lot to us. It makes the night very special for us. Your all being here tonight makes this very special for us. This is the single largest event that we have hosted at Grand Arbus Christian High School that Grand Arbus Christian Schools has hosted actually since the DeVos Center for Arts and Worship was dedicated now 11 or so years ago. This is a fantastic night for us to celebrate, to thank God for his blessings to this community, to thank you for what you have meant to this school system, and certainly to, uh, to celebrate, to celebrate a very special event. You know, Grand Rapids Christian has a long history of transforming itself. It dates back many, many years. And as the pictures behind me that you've been able to enjoy tonight have shown, Grand Rapids Christian's long history brings back some wonderfully uh, positive and meaningful memories. This, this history of transformation tonight takes on a new look. And the history of this transformation this evening culminates nearly about a four-year study that our administrative team and our faculty have been, have been completing. It's been a long journey. It's been an exciting process and it's been one filled with learning and memories of, of, their, of new memories now being created and of excitement as we now look forward to having you get your first-hand peek at what this high school now is and represents. Our stories have not changed. The message itself has not changed. How we communicate the stories and how we send the messages however, does change. And what you will have an opportunity tonight to see and to get a glimpse of is what a high-quality Christian educational institution with a long legacy within this community, what it looks like and what it represents. You see, the building is beautiful. The heart of this building, our teaching faculty, are amazing. And they're amazing because what they do in this incredible facility makes a difference each and every day in the lives of your kids, your grandkids, and it has for now almost 100 years. So tonight, you have an opportunity to join us here, as Jacob said, at home, to get a first-hand glimpse of just what it looks like for 21st century teaching and learning. We have been immensely blessed. We have been immensely blessed for many years, and tonight we are very grateful for that. We could not have done what we're doing here or what we have done for many years without you. A minute ago I mentioned tonight we culminate nearly a significant secondary transformation. As you know, and as you've likely seen in the paper over the last number of days or weeks, the Grand Abbas Christian Schools Board of Trustees recently determined that as a part of our strategic growth and as a part of our strategic plan, we would move forward now with the next step in this transformation of secondary education, and that moving forward resulted in our board approving our bid on the Shawnee Park campus for Grand Rapids Christian Middle School. That was a very big decision. And it was a decision that was based on many months of long, hard study. I can't say this evening that we have signed a purchase agreement, but I can say tonight that our conversations with Grand Rapids Public Schools are going very well they have been very productive, and I'm very optimistic that we will be able to secure a very good agreement with Grand Rapids Public as we 
take on a campus in a neighborhood that has been a very strong, faith-based neighborhood for many, many years. Catholic school families, Christian school families, public school families, charter school families have inhabited the Indian Village community for many, many years, and we're very excited about what that represents for us here now as we take this next step in our secondary transformation. We're not ready, however, to say we can pull the plug, and that's because we have not yet secured all the funds that we do need in order to make that a reality for Grand Rapids Christian Middle School. If some of you watched TV over the last number of years, you would have seen shows perhaps like Malcolm in the Middle. You know that middle child syndrome that we all sort of jokingly talk about from time to time. Grand Rapids Christian Middle School sometimes, we believe, has suffered from that child in the middle syndrome. We have a beautiful new elementary school. Fantastic teachers there. Lots of momentum, lots of growth, lots of great excitement happening at that building. And we have a wonderful school in the Rockford community that's been securing its place in the Rockford community for many years. Grand Rapids Christian High School, we invite you to, uh, to visit this evening. A fantastic facility with lots of great staff and lots of great things happening. And now it's the middle school's turn. And the middle school's turn is dependent on you, me, many others, to say we believe in the value of a quality middle school education. So that's what's up next. And as we think about that, and as Mr. Bryant, our principal at the middle school, and our middle school faculties plan and work and toil over what that means for them, we hope we can count on each one of you to help that become our reality as well. And we're looking forward to that, and we're very positively optimistic that that, in fact, will happen. So where are we? How have we been doing? Tonight I'm very happy to say that because of this event, we have raised now, after expenses, well over $300,000 just for our Eagles Fund, which is our financial aid, tuition assistance goal every year. It's our annual fund. Because of your help and because of the help of many within this community who have supported this evening, these table sponsors and others here who are not, who are not with us this evening but who believe in this as an important venture. We are well, well on our way of being able to achieve our annual fund, Eagles Fund goal for this current school year of $1.85 million of financial aid that we will distribute back to families who are not able to afford the full cost of Christian education. Thank you for that. Thank you for supporting this like you have. I'm also very pleased to say that we are now only in need of less than $2.7 million between now and when we are able to start our middle school work. We believe that the middle school project with the purchase price of the Shawnee Park campus is approximately a $9 million project for us. It's a lot of money. It's a very lot of money. We have raised now over six and a half, six point six million $6.6 million toward that project which means we are now at approximately $2.67, $2.7 million left. That's our goal. That's our challenge. We have been working tirelessly to bring this message to as many people as we can because we believe it's the right thing to do. We know where we're headed. We know why we're headed there. And we believe it's absolutely essential so that students like Jacob and 2,300 other preschool through 12th grade students at Grand Rapids Christian Schools may benefit from and have the opportunities that a high-quality Christian education provides for kids. Tonight, it's a night of celebration. Tonight is a night of thanksgiving. And tonight is a night for you to get that glimpse firsthand as to what classrooms in a Christian school that are equipped and prepared for 21st century students look like and feel like and so that as you leave this place tonight, you can understand clearly what it is we're accomplishing and why it is we're doing so. This evening, as we leave this place and make our way into the instructional core or the heart of this building, you will be, you will be hosted by a faculty member from Grand Rapids Christian High School and student, I believe, 
and they will be gathering you together at your tables, and you'll have a nice uh, personal tour to that teacher's classroom. And that teacher will be talking to you about what these new classrooms mean to them. How was it different, and why was it essential, and why was it so important to our faculty to go to our community with this sort of a need? So as we get ready for that, I'd like to just give you a little bit of a taste of what it is you can expect tonight. In a few minutes, we'll be dismissing. And if I were still a first grade teacher like I was back in 1983, 1984, 1985 or so, I would be dismissing the quietest tables first because that's how you get first graders from point A to point B. But I don't want you to be quiet this evening because this is a night of fun and celebration. I want you to be talkative, and I want you to have a great time doing it. And so, as we prepare to move, what you'll have to do, however, to make it as smooth as possible is wait for your table to be greeted by a student and a one of our teachers. And you'll know when it's time because they'll come up to your table, and that'll be your cue to it's time to make our way into the heart and the core of this, of this beautiful place. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope you have a great time. I hope that it, um, it, it has real meaning for you. You'll see the places that Jacob talked about in your tour. You'll see classrooms that do not look like classrooms did a year ago, or two years ago, 10 years ago, or when you perhaps were at school. But you will see classrooms that were thoughtfully and carefully designed by a very talented architectural team, by a very committed construction team, and by very dedicated Christian educators. Enjoy your tour. Enjoy this incredible facility that God has blessed us with. Take home some of those, those thoughts and prayers and ideas that, come to you, that came to you this evening as we celebrated with our students and have an absolutely great time. There is a program that was on your tables when you sat down tonight, and that program has some nice handy maps in it. So you can take that with you, please do, in fact, and use that as you give yourself then self-guided tours through the building once you've been through that classroom. Learning Without Limits is all about teaching and learning. Learning Without Limits is about enabling and equipping our students to fully appreciate and understand what God's call is on their lives. And I hope when you leave tonight, you can get a better picture of that as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you for your support, and enjoy your show.